1517, Martin Luther, he posted and promulgated his infamous 95 Theses. Martin Luther sought not to break free from the church, but to reform the church. To bring the church back to the core of its identity. And that is serving God first and foremost. Various corruptions in the church bothered Martin Luther. So much so, he was up day and night, frustrated. And pounding his fist on his desk, throwing inkwells at the wall, just frustrated that the church was going in a direction that it simply did not state in Scripture. Martin Luther, in posting his 95 Theses, sought to bring the church back to its main pillars. What Martin Luther tried to do in the 16th century, Jesus did in the first. Jesus sought and saw how all over the church, all over the Jewish faith, there were corruptions. There were things being added to the scriptures, things being added to the law that simply did not make sense. The church was excluding people, was pulling, putting people out because it wanted to hold to different standards. And these standards that the church was trying to be held to by the Pharisees and the Sadducees simply were not in line with what Jesus was calling the, the world to that is worship of God, first and foremost. So on this Reformation Sunday, let us remember, the Reformation didn't start with Martin Luther, but it started with Jesus. And Jesus sought to bring us back to the pillars of faith. The pillars that guide how we live. And as we are going to read here in Matthew 22, how Jesus responded to the Pharisees, responded to the lawyer, we're going to see that Jesus didn't post 95 theses, but put forth two pillars upon which all faith rests. So, I invite you to turn with me in your hearts in, to prayer to God as we ask God to come and show us who we are called to be in, this, in the scriptures and as a church. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We open our hands, we open our hearts, we open our minds that we might be your people. That we might serve you. That we might be led by you. That we might be guided by you. That, Lord, you show us what needs to be the pillar of our faith. Lord, guide us and lead us. As we hear how you respond. As we hear how you lead the people to remind them about what your word truly says. 
Guide us, O oh God. And open up these scriptures to us that we might hear your voice. For we pray all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles, or if you don't have your Bible with you on your phones, or if we, the scripture is also printed out in your bulletin. It is Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, it's fitting it was a lawyer among them, because the Pharisees were all about the law. And so it's fitting that a lawyer among the Pharisees comes up and speaks to Jesus. And he asks him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whatever we hold as dear, whatever we hold as true as the scriptures, that is what is going to guide the way we live. That is what's going to guide the way that we speak with one another. And that is going to guide us as we pursue God's mission in the world. So I ask you, church, If you were to break your faith down into a single paragraph, which many of you guys have done because you've written statements of faith to become a part of the church. But if you were to revisit that right now, what would that paragraph say? Church, truly, Whatever we put forth in that paragraph is probably going to be the thing that dictates how we live with, among one another. That's going to dictate how we worship. That's going to dictate how we speak with one another. That's going to dictate how we live. Because the Pharisees they saw the law. They lived among, they lived by it. But they wanted to add to it. Because the Pharisees saw the law and they saw how important it was and they said, no, we have to build a barrier around this. We have to make sure that people don't even come close to violating what the law says. And in so doing that, they added to the scriptures and what the law had already said. They added to what the prophets had said. And by putting them along, along this barrier, they got more focused on the wall than on what it was defending. So the Pharisees, as their pillar, was their extra part. How often is what we put as of paramount importance something that isn't found in the law? We must look into our hearts. We must look into how we approach the scriptures. Say, is this what Jesus was saying? Or is this what I want? Is this what I think should be most important? Jesus is calling out to the Pharisees here. 
He's saying, we need to get back to the heart of what is important. We need to ensure that we aren't saying that something that isn't what Jesus puts forth here isn't most important. Church, what we say from the pulpit and how we share the gospel with others is going to show the world what we think is most important. And so it must be important that we actually stop and listen to what Jesus is saying here. Because Jesus points out to us that the first great pillar of our faith, the first great pillar of how we enter into ministry, the first great pillar of our words, the first great pillar of our actions, must be this. Love God with everything in your being. Specifically in this translation, he says, your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's all of you. This is summed up the the Pharisees wouldn't have been surprised by this because this is summed up in what most Jews would refer to as the Shema. As found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. You would say this prayer. This was a common prayer that you would say and you would hold true as you walked into the door, as you entered into any place. You say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. So love him. And may everything I do as I walk out of the door. May I love the Lord, my God. And may everything in my being show that I love God. It starts here. Jesus wants us to remember, it starts here. The word that you've been saying since your youth. Remember that we are called to love God. God. The law doesn't start with a whole bunch of commandments. It starts with the desire to love God. It doesn't just start with, you got to eat, right? There are some people out there that that's their first pillar. You got to eat right and you got to exercise. We see that that's their first pillar because that is what they find most important. You have others out there that their sports team is their whole identity. That is what is most important. You have other people out there that say their job is their most important. That's the pillar that they put up. Or making money, that's most important. Or holding power, that's what's most important. No, church, none of that is important. Every single bit of that is inferior to loving God with all of our being. That's the first pillar. And Jesus, the beauty of what, how Jesus responds is he doesn't even skip a beat. He doesn't stop and say, hey, let's talk about this. No, he says, and the second is like it is similar. The second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Meaning Jesus saying you can't love God without also loving your neighbor. Those two things, they are tied. They are two pillars holding up all of our faith. So church, we can't say, no, no, I'm, I have to push, I have to kick that person out in order for me to love God most abundantly. No, we must love our neighbor as ourselves, and it doesn't matter who our neighbor is. It doesn't matter if we agree with our neighbor or not. It doesn't matter if our neighbor is a Christian or not. It doesn't matter if our neighbor is the worst person on this planet. We are called to love them. Period. Jesus is calling us to understand that. Because the way that the Pharisees treated people was terrible. Pharisees would openly say, thank God I'm not like that person. Church, when we start saying, that person, or thank God I'm not like them, or them, we start to put ourselves higher than somebody else. And that pillar is not a pillar we want to be on. Because Jesus is calling out the ways that the church had been practicing its faith. It had been putting, putting out the widows had been putting out the poor. Had been saying, "No, you're other." But we see in the way that Jesus treated their na the neighbors of Israel, the Samaritans. He put forth the fact that, in fact, the Samaritans. We're the hero in some of the stories that he told. We all know that great parable of the Great Samaritan. Jesus purposely puts forth somebody that they said was other, somebody that was less than, somebody that wasn't worthy of the gospel. Jesus said, No. I came for them too. God loves them. Israel, you are called to love them too. So church, who is other in our world right now? Who in our hearts do we push to the side? Or who in our society, maybe we don't do it actively. Who sits on the fringes? Who do we see just sitting there, not feeling as if they belong? Jesus points out to us that the second pillar of our faith, the second pillar of how we live, must be to love our neighbor as ourselves. Love our neighbor as ourselves. That's going to cause us and force us to start opening our eyes to the way that we treat one another. The way that we treat those on the outside. The way that we treat those who we say don't belong here. Or who don't feel like they belong here because of the way that we speak. Or the way that we treat them. They did it right to the very end. Even Jesus' own disciples. They got frustrated. Like, oh, Jesus, 
Why is this person coming in here and pouring this perfume on you? They saw them as other. That was precisely the kind of person that Jesus said. Love your neighbor. Your neighbor. This person right here. As you love yourself. And so Jesus calls us to adhere not to all of these other things around as important, but that the very pillars of our faith, the very pillars of our actions, the very pillars of our words, the very pillars of the true reformation of the church must be love God with all of our being. Every ounce of us must love God. Nothing comes before God. God is of the utmost, the paramount importance to us. And we love our neighbor as ourself. Martin Luther sought to bring the church back to the core of what the scriptures said. Martin Luther sought to bring the church to sola scriptura. What's most important is what it says here in scripture. Not all of the add-ons that the church puts there. The church, as we might know, was selling indulgences. They were selling Salvation. They were selling something that wasn't for sale. And church, we have to understand that sometimes the things that we do, we try to start selling things that aren't for sale. Because the gospel is free, always has been free, always will be free. We talked about this last week. The gospel is is free and freeing. And we must adhere to it and we must proclaim it to everyone. If we truly love God, we don't want to see anybody not understand that God loves them. And we are going to love people. We're going to shower people with the things that they need. Not hold back so that we might be lifted up. So that we might look good. That God tells us, you know, we're gonna have you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get dirty. Sometimes to love somebody. But in order to love somebody, you have to love me first. You have to get on your knees and pray. You're going to have to dig in the gospel to understand. Because church, we put so many things in front of love God and love your neighbor. That it's time that we here in the, in the American church that we reform To understand that the pillars of what the church stands on and has stood on is loving God and loving our neighbor. Everything else is secondary. Everything else. So church, as we go from this place, as we hear what Jesus is saying, He's posting his pillars of the faith, which is paramount, which is of most importance. As we go from this place, how are we loving God and how are we loving our neighbor?
How are we acting? How are we speaking? How are we giving away the free gospel? Love God. Love your neighbor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today offering up the gospel to, to our community, Lord. Fill us with an understanding that we must first show our love to you. And out of the loving you, we will love our neighbor. Lord, let us cast everything aside that we can cling to that. Help us as your church be reformed to understanding that you have called us to the greatest commandment of loving you with our whole being and loving our neighbor as ourselves. For we pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.